we just started. Okay, great. So for round five, this how supports the inclusion of feminist narrative in advertisement of fashion and beauty products. I'd like to invite the Prime Minister to start the debate here, here. All right. Um, first, I would like to clarify that I would like my POIs done verbally and I will start my speech now. So greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am the first speaker of the government side today. And first of all, I would like to make a definition of one of the phrases in the motion today. So I would like to define female narrative. So uh, what is female narrative? Female narrative is basically just like narrative that target women. Um, and now moving on, now I would like to introduce our background of this debate today, why we are debating about this topic today. So we're debating about this topic today is because like uh, in um, modern days, women feel under deserving of feeling good about themselves because having like a history of like being discriminated against by like men and such. So in this society, like women are still like uh, being... Um, feel like feel inferior to men and such so our core of this debate what we want to promote the most is to empower these women and there's nothing wrong be wanting to um improve and like l feel better about themselves and now i would like to introduce uh our stakeholders of this debate today um the stakeholders of this debate today are the women uh, the economy, which I will further on the elaborator, and the companies uh, that are making these advertisements. So first of all, about the economy. So how would this benefit the economy? So we believe actually this can like give more job opportunities to many different people. Why is that so? Because when we reach like these empowerments to these women, making them feel equal to men, reaching gender equality, it would actually encourage them and urge them to actually go out for them, go out to like fend for themselves, go out to um find jobs for themselves and like when these like job opportunities are equal between the genders i believe like we will have like, improved the workforce and improved the uh economy of the whole country and um now i want i would like to talk about um um women so uh, as i as i said in the background just now so how i would correct characterize these women's are like because like um, in like history, right, women has always been undermined, uh, been the undermined gender of uh, our society today. So this is why we want to empower them. So on companies, right, and I want to like mostly ca characterize on these like beauty companies like that like make these kind of ads, right. So how would I characterize these ads, right? Ads are like everywhere. They're widely spread and widely seen, and they give a bright and positive impression to the consumers. So I believe like with these ads, it can bring like a, a sh can shine a light on these kind of like women empowering and these like beauty products to make these women feel good about themselves. Now, um, I would now like to give my burden of proof, which is how can your side prove that there is a more efficient way to empower women that is exclusive to your side? Now, um, first, I would like to introduce my first point here in today's uh, debate is um about the fashion and beauty products. Now, what are fashion and beauty products uh, made for? They are made to provide confidence to the consumers to feel good about themselves, um, as I said just now. So how like does it make them feel good about themselves? These like women, when they like use these, um, fat, like when they like buy these clothes, they buy these fat beauty products to, um, you know, like uh, dress up and look good about themselves. They can like, like when they, are they can use this sort of, sort of way to express themselves uh in that way to make them feel more confident because you're like um you're showing what you want like you're you're choosing what you want to show and you're choosing how to express yourself throughout this clothing and your whole appearance so this is why we believe that these um fashion and beauty products can um help women express themselves in this sort of way and um uh, my and another point that we have is like about the marketing stuff, which my second speaker will further elaborate. And now on to my other point, which is like, um, if like some people like might might see like, oh, these like companies are like like kind of like promoting these like sexualization of like these women of their like own body or like objectifying them and such. But what we believe like is that these actually do not like 
promote this sexualizing and stuff it uh, rather but makes them feel good about themselves like it's pr it's promoting them like these beauty products these skincare products is promoting them to take care of their own welfare their own skin their own health and such and with like that is like making them feel like they are des they deserve to be um loved they deserve to be taken care of but from like like they deserve to like have care for themselves and such and um this can also help the um fashion company like the co no, sorry the companies that create these fashion and beauty products improve and why is that so when they have this kind of wide um spread of advertisements everywhere and many pe more people buy their products that that equals more sales more sales equals more benefit to the company and more benefit for them to um improve their products improve like their technology on like making these clothes, these skincare products and such to then improve the whole community as well by like having the community like buy them again and having a more larger, um, con like a uh, more like wider range of consumers. So now to um, summarize up my points that I've just said just now and like what our site is most wanting to uh, promote today is that we are focusing on empowering women today that and we are telling them there is nothing wrong to like ha want having them want to dress up for themselves to dress like for themselves to like fight for themselves fight for the rights for themselves so today i mentioned about uh, fashion and beauty products and the marketing side and how like we can help them appreciate their own body and not like instead like being sexualized by the others and by that i end my speech thank you all right thank you to the prime minister for that speech i now like to invite the leader of opposition to the floor here here um i need a second can i yes yeah, sure whenever you're ready A leader of opposition, is there any problems? Um, wait, this is um, Um, sorry, wait, eh? Is there any connection issues? Uh, a bit, yeah. Okay. Opposition team, are you okay? Um, right, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna start my speech. Are now. you able to switch on your camera? Um, uh, no, the the internet is a bit problematic right now. All right, sure. Okay. Um, right. So, <clears throat> um, right. So the uh, I'm gonna do some rebuttals. And I'm gonna explain what my teammates can do. Um, all right, right. Um, okay, so uh, my second speaker will do some rebuttals and throw up some points, and my third speaker will come up and summarize our points. Right. 
So, um, so the government team has given us the definition of the feminist narrative is um, targeting women. And also they are focusing on empowering women, right? So the motion is the house supports the inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisement of fashion and beauty products. We, right, they are focusing on empowering uh, women. We um, accept with parameter that men can also involve in the fashion and beauty product, right? So um, the first speak of the government said that this, uh, by supporting the inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisement of fashion and beauty products can increase the economy for the women to fend for themselves for like a job and they are equal to men and also increase the economy for uh, the whole country. Um, while this is true, the men are also important in, uh, in strengthening the economy of a country. If we take a look, most of the most of the economy of approaches are mainly handled by men um, to go out. So yes, uh, the government said they are focusing on empowering women, but we are saying that men are also important in the uh, uh, this state. So um, secondly, the first speaker of the government um, also said that ads and ads are widely spreaded. The beauty product, for example, is to make the consumer feel good to uh, for them to feel comfortable to them dress up to express uh, themselves to be more confident. Right, and for for this, men's uh men's also have their um fashion and beauty products which <coughs> also power on the men um as nowadays they are also example of that in real life and also the the first government also said uh it will make the companies easy to promote to promote the their product and take care to the consumer to be deserved to be loved and care. Right. Um women's products are not the only thing that the companies can buy to, they can go for it. Uh there are also men's fashion and beauty products they can also strive to excellence. Right. So um to my first point. Why we shouldn't support the inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisement of fashion and beauty products is <clears throat> this will make the right. So the first government also said that this is uh for women to be equally to men. It's a gender equality, right? So. Uh, uh, for my first point, is uh, is also not all right. So, uh, the men is also have to take of their skin care. There's also to um their health. They need also to take care of their health. And if we support the inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisement of I fashion see. and I'm um, sorry, cannot accept any of your eye right now. Uh, in feminist in advertisement of fashion and beauty products, um, this will this will uh, lower the chance of well-known products uh, of fashion and beauty of men to be acknowledged by all uh, all uh, by the society. 
Right. Uh, to my second point, why we shouldn't support this is that this will bring. All right. So we all know that. Please. Uh, advertisement is we get paid for for the advertisement of fashion and beauty products. So if we are more focusing on the women, then how about the men? They also get paid, but over time they will be less product of them of the month uh, and then um, the product will be uh, will be less uh, known and less successful so uh, that is all from me uh, thank you for being there just now thank you All right, thank you to the leader of opposition for their speech. And I'd like to invite the deputy prime minister to continue the debate here, here. What? Hello, hello, am I audible? All right, um, before I start off my speech, I would like to say and clarify that I prefer my POI done verbally. All right, I'll start my speech now. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am the second speaker of the government side. And before I start off my points, I would like to rebut that um, the opposing side have been um, emphasizing on you know, the men's side of these beauty products now. The reason why we're talking about the feminist narratives today is because, uh, like my first speaker has said about the background, okay, we are talking about uh, feminist narratives today instead of men because, um, you know, women feels like um, they're undeserving or like guilty of feeling good about themselves because of, you know, uh, they have a history of being discriminated against uh, and so uh, we today outside are promoting gender equality. Now, um, I would like to move on into the points that I'm going to be giving the op opposing side to. Okay, now today, um, I would like to say that <clears throat> our side supports the inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisements on of fashion and beauty products. Um, because it is a sort of marketing strategy. Now, just by putting um, empowering and feminist, uh, femi feminist narratives um, in advertisements of these beauty products um, can not only benefit a majority of women by giving them um, compliments or you know, empower them, just like my first speaker has said, it also attracts these women to buy the beauty products. So it also provides an increased amount of sales for the beauty industry. Now, what benefits does this provide for the entire society and the beauty industry itself? Well, for the beauty industry, of course, the sales are higher, so they're going to get more income and so on. And how does it benefit society? Now, uh, this is where I bring in um, sort of a cycle, all right? Now, so if... Um, on our case, right, we put these empowering messages or feminist narratives in these um, fashion and beauty products um, advertisement. <clears throat> and with this, it empowers women, boosts their confidence and sort, just like my first speaker has said, and it attracts them to come and buy uh, these beauty products. And so it increases the sales of this beauty industry. Now, this beauty industry can use this money to um, improve these beauty products, okay? Now, just by improving their beauty products, it can also improve the experience of these women. Also, um, and therefore also um, boosting their confidence more and creating a cycle of, you know, um, uh, empower, empowered and attraction, uh, increasing of sales, um, uh, ha uh, receives a sufficient amount of funding, improving in products, and then um, uh, circles back to, you know, empowering the women and attracting them to buy more. So this is uh, kind of a cycle, right? So this is why, you know, um, this uh, inclusion of, you know, um, advertisement, uh, inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisement is actually beneficial for the marketing side of the beauty industry. Now, I would also like to, uh, now I would like to elaborate on my first speaker's <clears throat> um, uh, points that he uh, that she pointed out now um before i start off this point i would like to say 
that um, on my last point, which is about the marketing strategy, um, why we don't um, you know, focus on uh, how these companies will actually target, uh, target these women's, you know, or, or sort of like a, um, objectifying this woman. And why we don't look at it is because um, a company's main goal is to get sales, not entitled to promote or achieve gender equality. Uh, <clears throat> And women get empowered when they see or buy products, even if it's just a wow. So the core purpose for these companies is to just get more sales and also selling these type of money. So we will not be looking into how companies will objectify women. And so what I'm trying to point out is that um, this woman and company situation is sort of a win-win situation for our government side. Now, I would like to elaborate on my first speaker's point, which is on how in the status quo, the majority of women uh, nowadays uh, are feeling like they're not good enough or you know, sort of under, uh, under, un under this undeserving. <laughs> and one of the main reasons for this is because of like, you know, um, in, uh, of cases of domestic violence in the past, all right? This is why women are sort of like undermined. And now in order to fix this issue of, you know, women being under, uh, undermined, uh, undermined, our side proposes that we should include, you know, wom uh, feminist narratives in our advertisement of, you know, fashion and beauty products. Now, I would like to elaborate more on how these empowering messages can actually uh, like boost the confidence of like these women. All right, so if you have a femin feminist uh, narrative in an advertisement, like right? your uh, picture this, you are a woman and you see an advertisement with something that says something like, um, oh, you're so pretty if you use this or like something like that, okay? A sort of like a compliment of sort. Wouldn't you be happy as a woman to see these type of compliments on an advertisement? Now, this will you know boost uh boost your uh, confidence as a whole person, and also makes you feel better as a woman. You know, and also it correlates back to you know how uh marketing strategy on how like the advertisement, uh, including this um uh empowering messages will actually attract more customers. Now, <laughs> now. I would like to say that in another point, which is like the point of like feminism isn't to like promote uh misandry, okay, misandry, but to achieve um sort of like equality. Therefore, men can also benefit. You know, with that being said, they have uh, the opposing side have yet to engage with us and only mention some uh, things about men, which we have stated that we do not want to focus on because in order to reach gender equality, we need to empower women as they have been discriminated against. <clears throat> now, I would like to move on by um questioning the uh opposing side that you guys uh, rem uh I would like to remind the opposing side to answer our burden of proof which is you know can your side prove that there is a more efficient way to empower women that is exclusive to you and my speech ends here I'm I'm happy to All right, thank you to the Deputy Prime Minister for the speech. I now like to invite the Deputy Leader of Opposition to continue the up case. Thank you. Um, I think she just asked if she could do both second and third speaker. Oh, uh, is it because your thoughts? Oh, wait, let me read, uh, sorry. Uh, they've been having this uh, internet connection problem because they were from boarding school and I came back home and both of them are still boarding school. And we are actually not allowed to have device and the internet connection is so terrible. All right, uh, that's okay. We'll have to indicate within the ballot that you are taking the second and third. But that, but the reply cannot be you, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll try to contact them again by yeah. the reply. All right, so if you're taking the second and third speaker, that means that the reply, I'm not sure if the reply can be you, unless you want to Iron Man all of it. Um, I'll try contacting them back. All right. Um, so in the meantime, um, Jasmine, can you also indicate in the ballot a speaker spoke twice? Okay, no problem. Thank you. All right. 
Okay, so in that case, um, the deputy leader of opposition, whenever you're ready. All right, give me some second for me to um, rearrange my speech and I'll start. All right, yeah. Um, all right, I'll start my speech in three, two, one. So hello everyone. And I'm the second speaker from the opposition team. Wait, can you guys hear me clearly? All right, so I'll start off my speech by um, oh, introducing the debate motion. This hall supports the inclusion of feminist narratives in advertisements of fashion and beauty products. And I am from the opposition team, we truly say this statement is false and we do not support this statement. Let me start off my speech by giving some rebuttals from the first speaker from the government team. So the first speaker of government team only focused on one main thing, which was saying that um, fashion and beauty was mainly made to feel good about themselves, especially for women, and this is all about empowering women. If this is all about empowering women, and where does the gender equality win? What about men? Aren't they supposed to feel good about themselves as well? Aren't they supposed to include in the advertisements as well? And for the second speaker, they gave a rebuttal on my first speaker saying that we have to emphasize on men, but yeah, most, yeah. So do you agree that women are the undermined gender and we should be focusing on them instead, like focusing more on that instead of the men? Um, I did not say that. Wait, can you come again? Do you agree that we should focus more on women because they are the undermined gender compared to men? Um, I believe that in this situation, in this era, women are not the undermined gender anymore because we all apply the SDG known as gender equality. So both gender has the equality. I hope that answers your question. Moving on to my speech. So... Um, back to my rebuttals, the second speaker mentioned about how it boosts the confidence and increased the sale and it's also improved the product. Let me ask, how does that improve the products? So recently, there's been a case where like people, um, especially women, been buying the skincare product where like when you apply it and your skin starts to glow and you have fair skin and turn out to be it's and in a shorter time and turn out to be it because the product um, can, the product has a chemical called mercury, which is definitely not good for your health, the skin and the melanin. How does that improve the product? The more people buy it, the more greed, greed um, the company gets and they, they just don't care about the health of the consumers, but instead all they care is about is the sales. And this doesn't boost the confidence if you use the product which doesn't help you in a good way. And now uh, moving on to my points. Um, Femmatizing on the surface seems like it bugs the strand, but what's happening behind the behind permatizing is a shocking example of a carpet hypocrisy. For example, uh, Delph, I believe all of us know what a Delph is. Delph's evolution campaign questioning society's standard of beauty and campaign for real beauty, um, stemming from the success of evolution. The truth is Delph's pioneering campaign for real beauty standard, a conversation about these beauty standards for many. But parent company Unilever ran these ads around the same time as those misogynist acts, travestics that reduced women to horny playthings, lusting after men, wearing the body spray, something they have pledged to discontinue. Same company with vastly conflicting stories. These ads do nothing to empower women. What they do is exploit the women's right movement at a time when it's gaining popularity and sits um, um, in the spotlight. 
On the surface, these brands wear feminist ideals, but at the core, they embody something vastly different. What's worse, um, they're doing it at a time when um, women's rights are anything but guaranteed under our current elected officials and around the world. You I please. Yeah. But did you just say that women's, uh, women already have equality, so why does your point stand in your case today? Come again? You're saying that the companies are actually misusing and exploiting the women's right because of like not having a stable political uh, uh, situation today. But didn't you just say just now that women already have like an equal equality today? So why would your point still stand? Oh, I did not finish my speech yet. I believe that um, at the end of the speech, you'll get what I'm trying to say. So continuing my speech. Uh, Moving to my point, exploitation for profit. Skeptics argue that using feminist themes in fashion advertisement might exploit serious social issues to sell products, potentially commodifying and profiting from the struggles and experiencing of marginalized groups, which could be seen as unethical. Exploitation for profit can occur when fashion brands use feminist narratives in their advertisement primarily as a tactic to increase sale and profit without genuinely supporting or advancing the cause of feminism. Here are some ways in which this exploitation can happen. First and foremost, commodification of feminism. When feminist ideas and um, symbols used purely as commodities to sell products, it can trivialize the movement and reduce it to a marketable trend. Feminism becomes a tool to attract consumers rather than being treated as a serious and meaningful social movement. Next, destruction from, un, um, from unethical practices. By incorporating feminist narratives, fashion brand may have to attempt to divert attention from the unethical business practice, such as exploiting labor, engaging in environmental harm, or failing to uphold fair trade principles. To focus on feminism and advertising can create a veneer of social cons consciousness that hides deeper issues. Moving on to my second point, it leads to misrepresentation of feminism. Critics argue that fashion advertisements may sometimes trivialize or misrepresent feminist principles, reducing them to mere marketing tools. They fear that the core idea of feminism, such as gender inequality and empowerment, could be watered down or co opted for profit, um, which could dilute their true impact. Next, lack of diversity and inclusion. Mis misrepresentation can also occur when fashion advertisements claim to embrace feminist ideals, but the images and narratives they, rep they present are exclusionary and fail to represent the diversity of, of women's experiences. That's it for my speech. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, yes, you may leave uh, and reconnect and then join back into the room if that's possible. I'm... Uh, give me a second. Uh, sorry, educators, so should we wait until they rejoin back? Um, let me just ask opposition, uh, is it okay, do you want to wait for your teammates to come back or is it okay if like they proceed, government proceed? Uh, are you asking us or the oppo opposition? Op op uh, Aishwarya? Um, it seems like, it seems like they're not even replying my text. So I guess they're having a terrible internet connection and they're going to take a longer time. So. I will so, be the one doing the third speaker. So I guess 
they can continue, the government can continue. All right. Um, I just confirmed with the ORCOM, you are allowed to do third speaker, but you are not allowed to do reply, meaning that one of your, like, one of the other teammates have to be the reply. All right, sure. All right, great. Okay, so um, I think if that's the case, then um, I will allow government to continue right now. Is that okay? All right. Yeah, sure. All right, great. So uh, go with, um, to the floor, he's here. All right, I will start my speech now. Okay, so before I'm really so sorry. Uh, before I begin my speech, I'd like to clarify that I prefer my PYs to be verbal and I go by inference. And I'll start my speech now. Okay, so uh, firstly, I'm going to be doing some rebuttals. Is that today I would like to say something? Is that today the opposition has should kept on saying that we are not focusing on men, we are actually ignoring men. But today I'd like to say something is. I would like to re clarify and restate something is that today the whole point of feminism isn't to promote misandry but to actually achieve equality. Therefore, men can actually also still benefit from our status quo today. And that with that being said, we have we have also mentioned, uh, they have also said that Tug is going to be misrepresentation of feminism and that how communication of feminism will become a tool to attract. So, once again, I'd like to say something is that today the companies actually have no the companies actually don't have any the companies aren't required to actually achieve gender equality or to even promote they aren't um required to actually be having uh, acquiring gender equality today and that no matter what companies main goal will still be to get sales so today when when we are actually having this inclusion of feminist narratives when the it will actually still give women or just their uh, consumers that little brief second of uh, empowerment, even if it's just that brief second today. So today, in our case, we are even able, even if we are able to provide them, uh, the consumers, just this little bit of empowerment, even in that second, it's actually already better than the, than the opposition's case today because in the opposition's case, they actually aren't empowering anyone, not even men, not even women. So today, in our case, we're actually better because at least we are able to uh, um, empower the consumers even if it's just that brief second. And another thing is regarding the misrepresentation of feminism. So today, we can actually already solve, we can actually solve this issue by just having women or... Uh, feminists actually help with advertising this product today. So we believe that that has actually already solved the issue or as well as your concern for the misrepresentation of feminism. So they have also mentioned regarding the communicate, um, how the fashion industry are actually using this to actually divert attention that, for example, labor, fair trade and principles. So today, we like to say is that today, not all fashion industry actually have like these kind of child labor issue or like this kind of fair trade principles issue. And today, even if they were to have that issue today, that is not what we are here to discuss today. What we are here to discuss today is to once again, I like to say is that our core is to empower women. So that is why we will not be talking about um fashion industry having like labor or like fair trade principles issue. And that now I'll be moving on to uh clarify more stuff regarding um the products will actually improve. So what my previous speakers actually mean by having the products improve is that the companies will get money from sales when we actually have like inclusion of feminists because when we are actually having like this inclusion of feminist narratives, we are actually empowering their consumers, be it men or women. I'd like to clarify that again, men or women, so the opposition can stop saying that we're actually ignoring men. Okay, so with that being said, since we're actually empowering women, we are actually making them make sure, we're actually making them feel that they are deserving and that they should actually feel good about themselves because there is nothing wrong with wanting to feel pretty, wanting to um, be the best of yourself today. So when we are actually promoting them and empowering them, they will actually feel that, oh, okay, it's actually okay for me to do this. It's okay for me to take care of myself. So therefore, when we are actually empowering them, not just the fact that it will actually benefit the consumers, it will also benefit the companies because today, when they are empowered, they won't feel like they're undeserving to or guilty to even get these kind of products. So today, when they are empowered, they will actually feel confident and they won't feel guilty or anything about buying these kind of products. So when they buy these products, they will be able to get the money gained from these sales. The company will be able to use these sales, use the money gained from the sales to furthermore improve their products. And that is what we mean by having the product quality improve and therefore also um, being able to even more so support women. So now moving on is that I'd like to be um, talking more about our case today. So today, 
our core <laughs> is to empower women. So there is nothing wrong with wanting to be pretty, wanting to take care of yourself, or even wanting to just be the best of yourself. And that is why today we want to have inclusion of feminist narratives. Because today, in the opposition side, they actually aren't doing anything to actually help with like empowering women. Because today, the reason why we are actually having this inclusion of feminist narratives has already been stated by my prime minister, is that women have, there's like a, the breakout is that women actually has been, have, has, has have a, history of being discriminated against and especially if they were from like a history if especially if they have like a history of like domestic abuse or so they will even more so feel like less they will even more so feel insecure they will feel even less they'll feel even more like undeserving of these stuff which is why today we act we will want to empower women because today we believe that empowering women is very important because today confidence is important and today even if gender equality is already achieved like the opposition has stated today confidence confidence is actually still needed today so today the, we are we are saying that women don't as that even though that compared to back then women do have slightly more equality compared to before but today we like to say is that women still don't have the same amount of equality compared to men in our current world so that is exactly why we want to empower women because today i'd like to say once again is that we are not ignoring men because we are also because men can also benefit from these kind of um compliments that are in these advertisements because there is no there's nothing stopping men from also feeling confident about these kind of advertisement when they say like oh you are beautiful oh you you deserve this so no there isn't we are not ignoring men we are actually like not even like um only focusing on women no we are also but our main target today is actually women but we are not ignoring anyone or neither are we causing any harm to anyone so i'd like to summarize our case today is that today our fashion and beauty products can improve as well as empower people um women because today when you are feel pretty you will feel confident and that the reason of this is because you are showing the best of yourselves through them, especially through fashion products. Because today, with clothing, you are able to show who you are. You are able to dress according to what your personality is or what you want to present yourself as. And that is very important because today, some people might be insecure. And with this, through clothing, we can actually let them... Um, represent themselves as what they want to be, what they want to be seen as. So today, fashion as well as beauty products are very important. And then moving on is that it is a win-win situation for both women and company. Because today, company's main goal is to get sales and that they are not entitled to actually promote or even achieve gender equality. And that women also get empowered when they see or buy the product, even if it's just a second. So today, we are actually benefiting both sides which is the company and the women, unlike the opposition team who where they are even doing anything. And with that, we are proud to oppose. And with that, I'll include my speech. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you to the government. Whip. Opposition Whip, are you okay? Um, are, is your team okay? Any more problems? Any more setbacks? No, they did not reply me. Okay, so the um in that case, then I'll let you do it first, and then um, will they be able to come back in time for reply? Um, I'm not sure about anything because they're not be contacting me or the teacher, and there's I don't know. All right, it's okay. Let me um ask the art com how should I rectify it. Please allow me a moment to um, rectify the situation. Okay, um, while I wait and officially apply from the ORCOM, can you um, just start with, with speech? Is that okay first? Can you start first? 
Can I get a second? Yes. Before I Whenever you're ready. Sure. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. So I'll start my speech in three, two, one. And I will be the third speaker for the opposition team. The motion for today's uh, debate is this heart supports the inclusion of feminist narrative in advertisements of fashion and beauty products. And we totally disagree with the statement. So starting off my debate by giving rebuttals. So the opposition team, uh, I mean, the government team, they kept on being saying that we are just giving focus to the men, but not women, but this debate is all about empowering women. And they also say that we are in a state where we are not focusing on men or neither women. That's not true. When it, we, um, as I mentioned earlier, we believe that uh, gender equality is has been achieved as the SDGs being applied and the younger people or older people, all of us are told to follow those. Here in this case, um, the third speaker, if I'm not mistaken, he mentioned about when we feel pretty, we feel confident and we don't feel insecure. Let me ask you a question. How you feel pretty and how the confidence comes from the confidence comes from when you feel pretty and how you know you got the confidence because someone else compliments you. So here, you need someone else to compliment you. And how does that work? Because you need all those beauty products P. that... P. Sorry? POI, please. Uh, I reject the POI. And also they mentioned that clothing... Um, so clothing... Um, embrace the personality and people are like allowed to embrace their personality and they, they don't feel insecure. Let me ask you a question. How sure you are that people nowadays, they are so comfortable of showing off their personality and just dress however they want. There are still some, not some, most of them who are scared to come out from the comfort zone and dress however they want. But that's not the case here. The case here is why we're saying um, feminist narrative shouldn't be involved in advertisement of fashion and beauty products. And yes, we are not ignoring men, as they say that they are not ignoring men, and that doesn't stop from anything. And they say that they still believe women don't have the same amount of equality. But I believe that the government team did not show any proof of how women don't have the same amount of equality. They did not show us a valid proof of how they don't have the same amount of equality. You are, please. Um, I reject it. Um, continuing my speech. To sum up uh, the first and second speaker's point. Femmertizing on the surface seems like a trend, but that these ads do nothing to empower women. These, uh, I repeat, these ads do nothing to empower women, but they've been focusing on how does this empowering women, but we from the opposition team strongly believe that these ads do nothing to empower women. What they do is exploit the women's right movement at a time when it is gaining popularity and sits in the spotlight. And also, we have also mentioned that exploitation for profit. They say that, um, First and foremost, commodification of feminism, when feminist ideas and symbols are used purely to sell products and reduce it marketable trend. 
feminism also becomes a tool to attract consumers rather than being treated as a serious and meaningful social movement. And the next point was about misrepresentation of feminism. Superficial and token state representation, fashion brands may include feminist narrative in their advertisement merely as a marketing strategy without genuinely supporting feminist principle or making any substantive changes within the organization. This kind of tokenism can trivialize the core values of feminism and reduce them to a trendy or empty gesture, lacking of any real commitment to gender equality. And this also promotes uh, promoting harmful stereotypes some fashion advertisements may claim to be feminist while still perpetuating, perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes. For example, a brand might portray women as empowered and independent while still objectifying them or adhering to unrealistic beauty standards. This contradictory messaging undermines the essence of feminism. And um, we have also mentioned about lack of diversity and inclusion. Misrepresentation can also occur when uh, fashion advertisements claim to embrace feminist ideals, but the images and narratives they present are exclusionary and fail to represent the diversity of women's experiences if the narratives are limited to a particular demographic or exclude the voices of marginalized groups. It can be, it can be um, reinforce existing inequalities rather than challenging them. And we also state an example of Dove's evolution campaign questioning uh, society's standards of beauty and campaign for real beauty stemming from the success of evolution. And we also state the truth about Dove's pioneering campaign, start a conversation about these beauty standards for many, but parent company, parent company of Unilever ran these ads around the same time as those and that reduced women to horny playthings, lusting after men wearing the body spray and stuff. So to sum up our case, we from the opposition team strongly believe that inclusion of feminist narrative in advertisement of fashion and beauty products shouldn't be supported. And that's all from me. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, um, opposition whip. Is your, are your replies here? Are your other teammates here for the reply speech? Um, I I can see them in the meet, but I'm not sure if they can hear you or they can reply you because they did not reply me. Um, I'm assuming throughout the entire time when we were having the discussion, they were also within the chat itself. They were also within this meeting, um, but they did not respond. So I'm assuming that even though they are here, they are unresponsive. I'm still waiting on Outcom to give me like a solution to this. So um, please be patient with me. I'm ap apologies for this delay, especially to the government team. I'm so sorry for the for the delay. Please let me rectify this with the Outcom.
All right, sorry guys, I just called the Oricom um, and they said that you have two choices, um, Aishwarya, you have two choices. One that you can continue doing the speech, however, um, due to the fact that you're not supposed to do so, it might also result in like, um, in uh, some problems with the scoring, but if you decide to sit this one out, it's also okay, that's up to you. Um, Aishwarya, are you uh, here? Yeah. yeah, I guess it's fine. I don't, I don't want to do the reply speech. Okay, so I'm, so I will indicate to them that the reply speech is not reply speech from opposition is not uh, done, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, that means that I will give the, I'll be giving the floor to the government reply to end the debate as a whole. Here, here. I will start my speech now. So greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am the first speaker of the government side today, and I will be giving uh, us like the re uh, a reply speech to summarize this whole case today. So we have mentioned about fashion and beauty products and how it would um feel make the consumers feel good about themselves and how the marketing how it, like um the companies can improve their like marketing and also um empower women at the same time. So it's a women situation, and how this can um. By doing these like kind of advertisements, um, it can make a woman feel good about themselves and how the fashion products would improve, um, because of this, because um of the having many of these consumers and such from these kind of promotions, um, so, um, to combat these right the um, opposition side have replied with like, uh, the corruption of a company. Now I feel like that wouldn't be that wouldn't like. It wouldn't necessarily happen because these companies like incentive is to earn earn some money so if they want to do so right they would need their public's recognition instead of like making their products bad and such which would like um, make their reputation go down and like their sales go down as well so i don't think uh, it would be practical to say that because that like the companies are not incentivized to do so and um i would like to say that we are our site are the ones that is truly promoting gender equality why so so to come back that they said like we, we okay in our background right, we said that um women are like in this society they are undermined they are they feel like they are, feel like they are the inferior gender yes although there has been more improvements in this uh few years right but we believe like that these like cases are still happening just like in like these traditional countries just like, like look at like india and such these countries still have like women um being um less feeling less superior to the men and such so i believe like they they have not proved yet like how like we have already reached gender equality and yeah um so now i would like to compare our worst ki worst case scenario to their was uh, their best case scenario so our worst case scenario even if the corruption of the company which they have stated is true women will still be somehow empowered because even like if their products is not that good right women like our main core today our main um point today is to empower women with these messages that these advertisements provide so these companies will still have these advertisements going and these women still will still feel empowered and in their best case situation they say that men and women will both be empowered which that that doesn't actually solve the gender issue here because they have yet to prove to us that we have already reached gender equality. So that I believe is not um um effective. And um they haven't yet to um prove our burden of proof that we have already given them of how they will actually uh, empower women as well, as they do not have already not agreed that women are still being discriminated against. So this is like a very parallel debate because they did not um, admit that and there is no engagement coming from them with that. And also about that, they have contradicted themselves um, about this point. Like they have said some points that still like said like about how women 
are still being discriminated against. So I'm, yeah, I'm still not, sh I'm not sure of like what they think about this yet. And also the corruption issue is not only exclusive to our side's case. Your their side's case can also have corruption, but even with men and women um advertisements. So um with that I end my speech and I am proud to propose. All right, thank you so much to the government with, for, uh, sorry, government reply for the speech. Um, and thank you all, both sides of the house for this debate. Um, yeah, so because this is a silent round, you guys can leave the room and go back to the main hall for the, uh, to join the meeting while me and my panel will stay in this room to submit our ballots. All right, okay, so thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you for the debate. Thank you very much. Thank you for the day. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Love you. How do I kick them out? When you stop recording, please hold on.